In this video, I am going to share with you some of the habits that I have acquired since moving to the UK. Hello Sunnybon Nani beautiful people, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for clicking to watch this video. If you are new here, my name is Tenjiwe, a South African content creator currently based in the UK. I am from South Africa and since we were colonized by the British, a lot of our habits are very similar to them, which is probably why it is much easier for us as South Africans to settle here in the UK. But having lived here for way too many years, I have noticed that I have picked up some of their habits uh, to give you guys an idea of how long I have been here. When I first arrived in the UK, I was a virgin. And now my son will be turning 16 in a couple of months. So here is a list of some of the habits that I have picked up over the years. Number one apologizing for everything the Brits are overly apologetic for things they shouldn't be apologizing for I even apologize for apologizing like every sentence starts with I'm so I'm sorry what did you say your name is uh, I'm sorry I'm sorry like I'm always sorry for something like if that's something I picked up here we have our words that we overly use in South Africa like shame uh, shame you are so pretty shame you are so kind and here the equivalent of that word is sorry I'm sorry what time is it I'm so everything I'm sorry number two not greeting strangers I used to find that very very difficult because I am from Guazulu and in the Zulu tribe, nobody is a stranger. We greet everybody. It is rude to not greet people. If you pass someone who's older than you, you greet them. If you pass a group of people, you greet them. Similarly, if someone younger than you passes you, they have to greet. Like, we greet. If we get on a bus, you greet. You go get on a train, you look for the train driver, you go and greet. We greet. Like we greet and our greeting is Sao Bona, so which means we see you. And we, we like we greet, you get a bus stop, you greet, you can't not greet. How do how did I learn not to greet people? And here if you greet people, they look at you like, Do I know you? Where do I know you from? Like, are you okay? Is something wrong with you? And I have Notice that sometimes I take this habit with me when I go back home until it clicks I'm no longer in England and then I realize I am home. I start talking to strangers. I start greeting strangers But that's a habit I picked up here that you do not greet people that are not your friends family or even not just strangers my neighbors You greet them They look at you like there's something wrong with you until well some of them are used to me now they know that i'm not gonna just ignore you i'm gonna greet you number three sunday roast when i first came here i used to find it so weird to see sunday roast because for me it's just dry food there's no stew there's nothing like i, I i'm from guazulu i'm from durban city of etequini where we eat several colors on sundays we call it seven colors your plate must have at least seven different colors and you know it's it's not a sunday without either pap or rice and you need to have some sort of at least one stew and you need to have all sorts of salads your, your plate can't just have two or three colors and when i came here i didn't like the roast but now i am the first one to cook the sunday roast i feel like it's not a sunday if there is no sunday roast especially in winter i have to have a sunday roast but I still don't make my own Yorkshire puddings. I think that's just too much. I buy them like number four. I shop little and I shop often. When I first came here, I didn't understand why people were buying one onion, two tomatoes, three sausages, 
where I come from, when we go to buy groceries, we do it once a month and we do it for the whole month. We buy 10 kg of rice, we buy 10 kg of mini meal, we buy 10 kg of potatoes, we buy like, we buy in bulk, we buy, we buy something that's gonna last us for the whole month. I never used to understand why here people will be buying a steak for today, one onion. But now I have uh, become that person who does that because now I'm into that habit of checking for the dates and realizing that I don't want it in my fridge or in my freezer for the whole month. So I'll buy what I will cook in the next few days. I buy what I will cook. The most I will buy is something that will last me for the week. And I have picked up that habit. And I actually think it is a good habit, but it's, it's different because at home you usually have bigger family members and at home you need to always have food for in case you have visitors because we do not make an uh, appointment to visit our families and friends we just show up so you need to always have extra food whereas here you know nobody's just going to show up they let you know if they are coming so i have become that person who goes to the market and buys two onions one tomato and goes to the butcher and buy two steaks and four sausages Number five, not stopping life because of rain. Where I come from, if it rains, if it drizzles, everything is canceled, everything is postponed. We do not go out when it is raining unless it is absolutely, absolutely, absolutely necessary. But it is not even communicated. If you are supposed to meet up with friends just for drinks or if you're supposed to visit somebody, you get up, it's raining, nobody's going to show up. You don't even need to call them to cancel. Nobody goes out when it's raining. But here in the UK, if you did that, you will only leave your house like six days a year because it rains a lot. So uh, rain does not make me cancel anything anymore. Life goes on, rain or no rain. I've learned to live in harmony with the rain. Like if, if it rains, nothing is stopping. We're still going out. It's raining, yeah, we're still going for that walk. It's raining, yeah, we're still walking the dog. We're still going to the pub for drinks. We, we're still doing everything we were supposed to do, even if it's raining. Number six has to do with number five. I now always carry an umbrella in my bag, in my car, everywhere. You need to always have an umbrella in the UK because it can rain any time. It doesn't matter what it looks like when you wake up, it will rain on you. It might rain for 10 minutes, but it will rain. When I first came here, I couldn't understand why they don't have umbrella vending machines at the stations because I thought, Every time I get off the train, it starts raining. But people here are so well trained. Everybody has an umbrella in their bag. That's why people don't carry the small pocketbooks like you see in other countries where people are carrying small purses. You need to have an umbrella. People carry backpacks. <laughs> carrying a backpack is very important or a bigger bag, like a bigger handbag, because you need to have an umbrella inside or a raincoat because otherwise you are going to be wet and you're going to look silly because when it rains it doesn't necessarily rain for the whole day it might rain just for 15 minutes number seven is being punctual here they keep time when they say it's starting at nine it's starting at nine you show up at 10 everyone is packing to leave you go to a kid's birthday party and they told you it's starting at nine you get there at 10 the party is finished, everyone is leaving. You go to church at half past seven, when they told you church is starting at seven, you get there, they are saying their last amen. It is not like in Africa. In Africa, we have African time. Definitely in my community, we have our own time. When we say, I am on my way, it means I am just getting out of bed. When we say, I'll be there now, it means, I am now starting the car. When we say I'll be there now, now, it means I am four blocks away. When we say I am at the door, it means I am looking for parking. And here, when they say 10 o'clock, you better be there at 9.55. So I have picked up that habit and I find it now so annoying when people don't keep time. I'm often the first one to arrive at functions or events or meetings when I am back home and I realized they're a British habit. That's something I picked up here. Number eight, 
summer holidays. I now find it necessary to go on a summer holiday. I find it necessary to go on holiday. Being South African, we do not go on holidays. When we take time off from work, we go home. In December, we can't wait to go home. By home, I mean our parents' home where we grew up. We go back to the main family home every December. That's where we're going to meet. We do not plan to go on holidays. It is a habit that I have picked up here where I feel like my year has been ruined. Like last year, 2020, my year was ruined. I didn't get my summer holiday. But at home, even though we would now, nowadays, we will go on maybe a weekend away, a week away with friends, but we don't really do family holidays like they do here where you plan as a family. We go on fun holiday with friends or on vacations. And here I've picked up the habit of the importance of going on holiday and I now find it necessary. I even have a separate saving pot where it's just money for the summer holiday. And it's a, one of the habits that I have picked up here. If you are African and you live in the UK, please let me know what do you do with your holidays? Do you go home or do you go on holidays when you take time off from work? Number nine, complain. I have learned to complain guys. I've learned the art of complaining. I never used to complain where I come from. If they give you the wrong size, it means you're going to give it to someone else because you are not going to get your money back. If you get bad customer service, you can only moan to your friends. You cannot go, you can't call the manager because sometimes the customer service that is so bad is from the manager. And like, we, we don't complain. We just accept uh, bad treatment. I think we are just so used to it that we do not even know about our consumer rights and here I have learned that it is your money you are spending so you have every right to complain. The customer is always right. At home the customer is never right. It's like they can tell you not to come back to the shop anymore if you start to complain but it's a habit I have picked up here so much so that I find myself sometimes doing it when I'm back home and my friends look at me why why would you say that why did you say that I, like i question things i even question prices on things like why is this towel costing so much money but look at its quality like is it gonna wash my sins away why are you charging me so much for this i question things and i expect good customer service and that's definitely a habit that i picked up here number 10 i count my change guys I now count my change before I leave a shop, even if I'm outside a shop, if I am missing something, I am not afraid to go back to the shop and say, ah, you short changed me. I used to find it so weird that people are counting their change and they will go back and say, ah, I'm missing a pound, but now I understand the value of a pound, I will also go back to the shop and want my pound back. I never used to count my change. I do not know why. Please let me know if you are African. Do you count your change? Did you count your change before you came here? Is it just me that picked up the habit of counting change when I got here? Number 11, wearing comfortable shoes. I used to think being a lady means wearing high heels. I used to think being a lady means always being in formal shoes. And this is a habit I picked up here that you need to be comfortable. When you go to the train station here, everyone's in a rush, everyone's rushing. Everyone's wearing comfortable shoes and the high heels are in the bag we're going to put them on when we get to the office we're going to put them on when we get to the meeting we're going to put them on when we take that photo for instagram but uh, when we are walking comfortable shoes i now wear comfortable shoes guys i used to wear high heels walking to the taxi rank and now you will not find me in high heels unless i am getting paid and number 12 using public transport back home the one thing you look forward to is to get a job so you can buy a car so you never have to use public transport ever again ever again because public transport is not something you want to be seen in it's not something you want to be in it's, it's not a good experience but being here, I now prefer public transport over a car. I find it so much more convenient to use public transport, be it a bus, a train, 
I just find public transport so much more comfortable and convenient and I never ever thought that I would do that and that's certainly a habit that I found here and my friends always laugh at me at home when I like no let's not drive let's get on a train let's get on this let's go and they're like no 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 who's sitting for four who's go no we don't do that but here public transport is the thing that I now enjoy and those are some of the habits that I have picked up since I started living in the UK. Please do share with me if there are any habits that you have picked up or any habits that are similar to the ones I have picked up. Oh, let me not forget, there is one more, which is thinking that a cup of tea will fix everything. Like being South African, we drink tea a lot. We grow tea, we drink tea, but we drink tea for the sake of drinking tea. Whereas here, you get hit by a bus, ooh, I'll give you a cuppa. You get heartbroken, a cup of tea will fix it. Like tea for everything. And I am now that person who will make you a cup of tea if you come to me and tell me, I've just lost my job. Okay. A cup of tea will fix that. Oh, my boyfriend just left me. A cup of tea will fix that. I just got shot. A cup of tea will fix that. I, I will make you a cup of tea before I call the ambulance. I don't know why I do that, but that's definitely something I picked up in the UK. And thank you so much, guys, for watching this video. Please do not forget to like the video, share the video, subscribe, as well as leave me a sweet comment and share your own habits that you have picked up from any country that you have moved to or if you have moved to a different city from the one you grew up in, please do share if there are any habits that you have picked up. And I love you guys, and I will see you in the next video. Kulungi lege, bye!